So here's the thing about annotation. I don't think there's a right way to do it. It's personal, and that makes it a different kind of challenge to teach. I've spent the last month thinking about this and developing curriculum for it. I started with checklists and copy and paste templates for digital annotation, but I ended up somewhere much nicer. Because as tempting as it is to give students a bookmark showing 93 things they could look for in the text with color codes for each one, do we really think they're going to carry on with that once we're not hovering? Not so much. Today, in episode 145, we're going to talk about what it looks like to be good at annotation, a few creative ways to get there, and maybe most importantly, how to help students understand the point of being good at annotation. Hey there, I'm your host, Betsy Potash, and one-pagers, project-based learning, and choice reading are my jam. I believe in you, and my goal is to help you explore all the creative possibilities you dream of for your classroom. I'm an educator, a chocolate cake aficionado, a traveler who can't wait to get back to Barcelona, and the kind of mom who brings her own mini maker space to her kid's classroom when she comes to volunteer. I know this for sure, creativity isn't always easy. As a creative teacher, you get parent calls you treasure, and plenty of sidelong comments you'd rather forget. But here's the bottom line, creative education can ignite a spark in your students and change their lives forever. You and I know this. You're an innovator, and while it's sometimes hard, it's so worth it. So let's explore the world of creative education together. Welcome to the Spark Creativity Teacher Podcast. Before we jump in, I've got a review spotlight for you. Reading one of your reviews is like stand-up paddleboarding on a clear night. It never fails to make me happy and light up my day. So this week, I want to say thank you to Ali Stats, who wrote, I have been a part of Betsy's Facebook group, Creative High School English, this past year as a first-year teacher, and I am beyond grateful for it. I finally got around to listening to this podcast, and I'm obsessed. I have never listened to such a clear, creative, and concise teacher podcast, and have already written down so many notes from the episodes to bring into my classroom. Betsy, you are awesome at what you do. Thank you for sharing your wisdom. Wow, thank you so much, Allie, for your kind words. They really made my day. Friends, when you give the podcast a five-star rating in your app or leave a review or screenshot it and share it to your Instagram stories, you're helping spread our message of creativity to more classrooms around the world, and you're bringing me so much joy too, so thank you. Today, let's start with what it looks like to build mastery in annotation. What do advanced annotators... Wait, is that a word? What do advanced annotators have that beginner annotators do not? Like with so many things in English class, I'd say it's all about intention. Annotating just to annotate is pretty easy, right? You grab a pen, maybe some colorful sticky notes, a highlighter, and you underline, highlight, and sticky up a storm. But what have you really accomplished? Chances are your beginning annotators in class don't feel any more confident discussing or writing about the text that they've just randomly marked up once they're done. So as we teach our students about annotation, and we teach them that there's no specific one right way, we do want to let them know that there is a desired result. Okay, so there are a lot of paths to get there, but there is one desired result. When they're done annotating, they should understand the text better. It should be easier for them to ask a question about it, and it should be easier for them to answer a question about it. It should be easy to flip back through a section and find the things they want to find. The text should be more memorable to them than if they didn't annotate. So these are big goals. (laughs) Some master annotators will achieve these goals by being flare pen Jedis. They'll use color coordination to identify themes, quotations, big questions. Others will be superb sticky note jugglers. They'll be pro at using tiny little squares as a guide through the maze of text. Some master annotators will write long notes to themselves in the margins while others draw sketches. Some will combine all these strategies at will, using a sticky note here, a highlighter there, a flare pen here, a long margin note there. It doesn't matter what their annotation looks like as long as they use it to get to the goals. 
So we know what we want. Master annotators who have developed their own style. And how are we going to get there? I would say, like so many things, there are a ton of options. But today I'm going to share four. Maybe you'll hear one that you want to try or maybe you'll want to experiment with them all. Number one, building annotation skills with illumination. Have you ever seen those old manuscripts in museums or on museum websites where artists illuminated text with beautiful pictures painted in the margins or painted right into the text itself? These stunning versions of text brought so much richness to the words. So for this project, students will try illuminating a text themselves in their own modern way. No need for any gold leaf paint. (laughs) To have your students illuminate a text, you want to think about what annotation skills you'd like them to try out. So this might feel a tiny bit checklisty, which we've just said we're not going to focus on. But this is just a chance to sort of put some possibilities out there to your students. Every student will put their own unique spin on their final piece, and everyone will learn not only from what they do, but from what all their classmates do. So you can put a list up on the board or on your handout sheet that says, like, here are some possibilities for your illumination. You might want to identify literary devices. You might want to highlight key moments of characterization. You might want to share themes. You might want to experiment with sketch notes and visual icons. You might want to use color coordination to help your viewer understand what they're seeing. You might want to ask questions. So you put that all out there and you let students choose a text or you choose a text for them. Your goal here is for them to practice annotating really deeply on one piece. So this is going to be like an extreme close read. They're trying to bring it to life visually with incredible annotation. And by going so deep, then they're going to sort of see how powerful annotation can actually be. If their experience is like mine, when I went through this project illuminating a text, they will understand it so much better by the end. And they will also have all these new ways of annotating that they can see really make a difference. So Once they're done, once they've illuminated their text and they could do it on paper with all kinds of art supplies, they could do it in a program like Canva. If you've introduced Canva as a digital design tool, they could even do it on Google Slides easily. Once they're done, you're going to want to give them a chance to share their work with each other. So you're going to put all of these in-depth, close read annotations up on your wall and have your students walk around looking at them maybe filling out some kind of compliment cards or sticky notes for a few of their favorites to say what they like about it or how they find the annotation powerful. So then by the end of the project, not only will they have gone in depth with a close read and experimented with what annotation types work well for them, but they will also have seen how 25 other kids did it. And and by the end, you want to kind of Um, either make a list on the board or have them jot down some reflections themselves to consider like what worked really well what helped you remember the text what helped you understand the text what did you notice other kids in the class doing that you want to try in the future with annotation so this is what I used to call a showcase project where you take a concept and you turn it into kind of a special event with a really memorable project so that you teach the lesson through something that's meaningful and memorable. All right. Number two, building annotation skills with collaboration. Collaborative annotation is a fun way to help students dig deeper into a text and learn from the ways that other people annotate. So this is a recurring theme here that they can kind of learn more about their own style, but also learn from other people's styles through this project. So if you want to do a collaborative annotation, you're going to divide your kids up into groups. You could have groups of two or three or four and design some roles for them. So like, for example, maybe you have groups of three and the the first person is going to really look at kind of the literary nitty gritty. They're going to identify literary devices and make them visible to the viewer with incredible Um, explanations and matching colors and maybe they're going to take sticky notes and go all through the text and put up the vocabulary words that people might find confusing and define them on those sticky notes 
And while they're doing that, the second person in role number two is going to be going through and looking at the big picture. This big picture person is going to identify themes and ideas and make those visible in big and bold and bright lettering in the margin notes. This person is going to be in charge of making sure that no viewer is confused by the text. So if any section is a little murky, a little confusing, they're going to try to suss it out in the margin. And then maybe the third person is going to be your visual explainer. They're going to add in some icons and sketches or drawings, anything they can think of to create visual meaning to help the viewer understand what's happening. So you can use this obviously with any close read, with any form of annotation. But what I'm suggesting, and I show some pictures of in the show notes, is that it might be fun to do this with a really large text on your wall. So this can either mean um, writing passages up on your chalkboard or whiteboard in really kind of large lettering so students have a lot of space to work, or putting butcher paper up on the wall and letting kids choose a passage and letter it up on that their huge paper. Or, and you can take a look at my pictures in the show notes, you can, you can print some very big posters of text. And I experimented with this this week, and actually it took me about 45 minutes to figure out, and it was quite fun. I made a giant poster in Canva um, that was 17 inches wide by 33 inches high. So I knew I was going to print it over six pieces of paper. And it took a little bit of monkeying, like I say, but eventually I was able to print it over six pieces of paper. And then it just took a couple minutes to trim it and tape it up on the wall. So you could give students puzzle pieces like this of your text and have them create giant posters. So you get your big text up, however you want to do it, and you get your kids in groups and you let them do their roles. And once they've all done their roles, they should get together and explain what they've done to each other. And again, this is a moment when they can learn from each other and learn from each other's annotation styles as they're developing their own styles. And it's also a chance for them to understand the text better and then by the end be ready to go with some discussion questions. And then maybe you want to let each group present to one other group. So they're going to be exposed again with depth to how other folks are annotating. And then I would wrap up with a gallery walk. So by the end of the class, they've they've performed a role. They've learned from each other about how their own group members annotate. They've learned from another group and then they've briefly seen what every single group in the class did. So this is, this is a lot of different ways to approach annotation and learn more about the possibilities to develop their own style. All right, number three, building annotation skills with quick practices. So this one is a little more low key. It's not like a full class activity like the other ones. This is something you can sprinkle in all throughout a unit. And this is just a chance, if you are noticing that there's something your students aren't doing that you want them to try, this is a way to scaffold that in. So maybe you notice that they're doing a really great job with vocabulary and they're doing a really great job with themes, but they're not asking very interesting discussion questions in the margin. Or maybe they're great at discussion questions, but they never color coordinate their um, margin notes and you think that would actually be really helpful. Whatever you want them to just experiment with and try to see if it would be a good element for their style, you can give them like a try it challenge. So you just project up a slide or give out a little task card or a bell ringer or whatever and it says, as you examine and annotate this text, focus on this one thing, right? So all you're doing is just like a super quick five minutes. Take five minutes and try color coordinating your... Um, literary devices for this close read. See if it's helpful to you. See if it helps you understand what you're reading. See if it makes it more memorable. See if it sets you up better for our discussion. Or take five minutes and really notice what's going on with this one character. Make all your margin notes be about characterization. Draw pictures of the character. Um, Star key quotes about the character. Jot character traits in the margin. It's all about character. I want you to experiment with doing annotations. Really focus on characterization today. Or whatever it is, right? I'm sure you could think of a half dozen, a dozen different things you might like to have your students try. Okay, number four, the big finale, 
Building Annotation Skills by Annotating Images. Now this one I think is really fun. Images provide another really interesting angle from which to approach annotation. There are so many ways that students can take their understanding of a text and then use it to annotate some related image. Maybe the image is going to be a photograph or a map or a character silhouette or a magazine cover, a book cover, an infographic, a printout of a web page. Somehow you find an image that closely relates to whatever they've been reading and then you have them transfer like the key information from the reading onto the image. So I remember doing this once with The Great Gatsby and creating maps of the area of East and West Egg and where did everything happen and where were the characters going and where were the eyes of Dr. T.J. Eckelberg. Or, you know, maybe you're um, studying global warming a little bit and you want to give them a world map and you want them to take what they've read, maybe what they've watched in a video, and you want them to annotate the map and show you know, where high impact areas are that relate to what they've been reading about global warming. Maybe they've been reading about the history of fashion and you're going to show them a uh, the fall clothing line from Guess and you want them to annotate like what are these styles and colors? How do they relate to the history of fashion? Um, these are just random examples, but there are so many ways that you can do this. You can show them some examples of ways that media and um, writing get mixed and matched. If you know me well, you know this is like a, a big thing for me. I think this is so important in ELA that we combine imagery and media with, with good writing and careful research. So I think Building your annotation skills by annotating images is just a fabulous way to practice this. All right, so what do you think? Are you ready to have some fun teaching annotation? Goodbye checklists. Hello, creative personal styles. I think it is a wonderful thing that every student will annotate differently. We'll do it the way that's right for them, but I think every student style can be informed by activities like these. So I hope you'll try illuminating text or try collaborative annotation or try some annotation challenges or try annotating images. Before we wrap up, here's the scoop from Slovakia. These days in Bratislava, the world is gray with a side of gray. Know what I mean? It reminds me a lot of growing up in northern Minnesota when the snow and the slush and the clouds and the air all just seem to blend into this muted palette, the colors of deep winter. We've recently learned how to pick up packages at the post office. We figured out how to bake brownies in our oven, and we discovered a really seriously empty, gigantic trampoline gym just a few minutes from our house. So these are all huge winter wins for our family, and more and more, I feel like we're settling in here. In a few weeks, we'll be heading to Dubrovnik, Croatia for our spring break. And the month after that, we're going to London for a conference that my husband is going to. So if you've been to either of those places, I would love to hear your family travel suggestions. DM me anytime to talk about the explorer life. It's one of my favorite things. Okay, thank you so much for joining me today. It's been a blast sharing ideas to take teaching annotation from a frustrating chore to a creative pursuit, and I hope you're feeling the same sense of fresh excitement around an old topic that I am. Until next time, take care of yourself and stay creative. <laughs>